Hello everyone. In this session, I will be talking about the development of liver and pancreas. During the fourth week of development, there will be formation of three glandular buds at the caudal part or the distal end of the foregut. So one of the bud which appears at the ventral aspect is the hepatic bud or the hepatic diverticulum. Other two, one at the ventral aspect and other uh, the, at the dorsal aspect. So these two contributes for the development of the pancreas. So one at the ventral aspect is called as ventral pancreatic bud. The other one at the dorsal aspect is called as dorsal pancreatic bud. So the hepatic diverticulum and the ventral pancreatic bud, they uh, form an outgrowth and they develop within the ventral mesentery and the dorsal pancreatic bud, they grow into the dorsal mesentery. Now coming to the hepatic bud, the hepatic diverticulum. So this hepatic bud have rapidly proliferating cells which are contributed from the endoderm which later forms the hepatocytes. They rapidly proliferate within the septum transversum and as they proliferate within the septum transversum, septum transversum as we as I told earlier that it is a mesodermal plate which is present at the ventral aspect of the foregut which gives contribution for the development of ventral mesentery and also you should not forget that it also contributes for the development of central tendon of the diaphragm. So this symptom transversum within that there will be rapidly proliferating hepatocytes and this hepatic diverticulum as they proliferate they move towards cranially. As they move towards cranially within the septum transversum, the connection between the diverticulum and the other end which is attached to the foregut, it narrows down to form the bile duct. So this is the part of the extra biliary apparatus. Okay, from the biliary duct, there will be one more outgrowth from the ventral aspect which later give rise to gallbladder and cystic duct. So gallbladder, cystic duct, bile duct, all are into the extra biliary apparatus. So this is how the extra biliary apparatus develops. So this developing uh, hepatocytes, the rapidly proliferating, they are within the septum transversum. So the distal end rapidly into the tra septum transversum and this forms the hepatocytes and the intrahepatic biliary system. So these are extra hepatic biliary system. Okay, so the endoderm part which is outgrowing from the foregut which is which is called as a hepatic diverticulum they mainly form the liver cords that is the hepatocytes and the biliary duct epithelium that is the intra biliary duct epithelium and these hepatocytes they intermingle with the vitelline and the umbilical veins so the veins which are present there so these hepatocytes which are present within the septum transversum, they intermingle with the vitelline and the umbilical veins to form the sinusoids and the portal vein. Then the mesenchyme cells in the septum transversum, they give rise to other cells, the cuffer cells which are involved in the phagocytosis, cuffer cells, hematopoietic tissues, hepatic artery and other connective tissue which are present within the liver. So this, these are the cells and these are the uh, embryological structure giving contribution to these cells which form the liver and the biliary system. So there is contribution both from the endoderm and the mesoderm. So since the liver develops within the ventral mesentery as I told earlier and again I am re repeating that ventral mesentery will be divided into falciform ligament which is attached from the liver to the anterior abdominal wall and the remaining ventral mesentery from liver to the stomach will form the lesser omentum. Okay, so the mesoderm, the septum, part of the septum transversum which is covering the liver will form the visceral peritoneum. So the mesoderm which covers the surface of the liver, they differentiate to form the visceral peritoneum except at the cranial aspect okay so the cranial most aspect the mesoderm which is from the septum transversum 
they are not covered they are not covering the liver they contribute for the formation of central tendon of the diaphragm okay so that area where the the layer of mesoderm the layer of septum transversum which is contributing for the formation of central tendon of the diaphragm so that area won't be covered with visceral peritoneum so that area will be called as bare area of the liver so the function the liver is developing when does the liver function starts so secretion of the bile from the biliary apparatus and from the uh, both from the intrahepatic and extrahepatic it begins at 12th week okay so it enters the git through extra biliary apparatus and enters the duodenum and the contents will take the dark green in color okay but the very important function of the liver in the fetal life is hematopoiesis so which is a major function so it comes into action at the fourth week only and it continues until birth okay so secretion of the bile at the 12th week but hematopoiesis starts very early at the fourth week and continues until birth so these are some of the clinical correlations or clinical aspects so there uh, this can be not very dangerous it can be asymptomatic there can be development of form uh, present uh, appearance of accessory hepatic ducts okay there can be duplication of gall bladder or sometimes even the ducts within the liver and in the extra biliary apparatus they undergo solid cord formation as i told in the duodenum so duodenum initially the epithelium uh, the cells undergo proliferation and there will be complete closure of the lumen which has a solid cord appearance and later apoptosis takes place uh, where recanalization occurs so similarly the ducts present in the liver also undergoes uh, undergoes solid cord formation due to the epithelial proliferation okay then there will be recanalization by apoptosis so if there is any abnormality in this in the recanalization can lead to atresia so there can be involvement of extrahepatic biliary ducts or intrahepatic biliary ducts so depending upon that so it can be called as extrahepatic biliary atresia or intrahepatic biliary atresia where there is absence of recanalization so that leads to complete closure of the ducts so there will be problem in the secretion of bile now coming to the two other buds which appear during fourth week that is the ventral pancreatic bud and the dorsal pancreatic bud so this is a cross section okay taken at the level where the buds are present so this is the developing duodenum from the foregut okay this is the ventral pancreatic bud and this is the dorsal pancreatic bud as the rotation of the stomach and the duodenum takes place the duodenum Uh, rotates to the uh, right side forming a c shaped loop so the what happens to the ventral pancreatic bud they undergo rotation and they come and lie on the dorsal aspect fusing with the dorsal pancreatic bud so ventral pancreatic bud migrates to the dorsal aspect of the foregut then it fuses with the dorsal pancreatic bud so the foregut and the dorsal mesentery as they fold to the right side so the dorsal mesentery so initially as i told the pancreas after fusing the two buds they fuse as they fuse each other so initially it will be intra peritoneal organ so what happens due to the obliteration of the dorsal mesentery the pancreas they become the secondary retro peritoneal organ just like duodenum so duodenum and the pancreas initially it will be within the peritoneum since there is obliteration of the dorsal mesentery both the duodenum and the pancreas they form secondary retro peritoneal organ so you know the parts of the pancreas so it has the uncinate process then the head body and the tail so these are the parts of the pancreas so which part of the pancreas is from which pancreatic bud so you will come to know now the two pancreatic bud they fuse at around 6th week dorsal pancreatic bud which is the major part gives contribution to the head body and tail the ventral pancreatic bud after rotating so it mainly contributes for the uncinate process and the inferior part of the head the major part of the pancreas 
is contributed from the dorsal pancreatic bud. So as it rotates, as the ventral pancreatic bud rotates, you can see it winds around the superior mesenteric artery. So superior mesenteric artery which takes origin from the dorsal iota. So it lies posterior to the dorsal pancreatic bud. Okay. After rotation of the ventral pancreatic bud, the superior mesenteric artery lies anterior to the ventral pancreatic bud. Okay. So for the head and the body, superior part of the head and the body, the relation of the superior mesenteric artery is posterior. But for the uncinate process, it is at the anterior relation. So now coming to the pancreatic duct. Okay. So usually there is a main pancreatic duct. So they, uh, they are formed from the distal part of the dorsal pancreatic bud and from the vent ventral pancreatic bud. Okay. So there are two ducts. One of the uh, one duct is from the dorsal pancreatic bud and the other one from the ventral pancreatic Okay, so the main duct is formed from the distal part of the dorsal pancreatic bud and the ventral pancreatic bud. They join to form the main pancreatic duct. Sometimes the proximal part which you can see a tiny structure here. Sometimes it remains and there can be presence of accessory pancreatic duct which also opens into the duodenum. Okay, but major secretion passes through the main pancreatic bud which is formed from the distal part of the dorsal pancreatic and the entire ventral pancreatic duct. So, the cells which are present in the pancreas, that is the pancreatic acini, the serous acini and the islets of Langerhans. So, both are contributed from the endoderm. Okay, so as I told earlier in, uh, in the beginning of my first video that most of the epithelial cells and the spe special cells which are present in the glands, especially in the liver and pancreas, they are from the endoderm, foregut endoderm. Okay, which uh, in the pancreas, it includes islet cells and the acinar cells. Okay, so the pancreatic acini mainly they secrete the enzymes which are necessary for the digestive enzymes which are necessary for digestion. Okay, but islets of Langerhans, their main contribution is the production of hormones. Okay, which includes glucagon, insulin, somatostatin and other polypeptide which are secreted by the islets of Langerhans. Now coming to the clinical aspects. So as I told the ventral pancreatic bud undergoes rotation and it goes dorsally. So this is a normal rotation. So sometimes what happens there can be two bud formation at the ventral aspect. Okay there can be an extra bud. One can rotate from one side the other one from the opposite side. So if they rotate in the two opposite direction this leads to a, a condition called as annular pancreas. So this will obliterate the duodenum. This happens whenever there is formation of two ventral pancreatic bud which rotates in two different direction and they encircle around the duodenum forming an annular pancreas. Or sometimes there can be presence of accessory pancreatic tissue. Okay, so sometimes it can be asymptomatic or sometimes if it obliterates the duodenum, this can be symptomatic and leads to different signs and symptoms. So that's about the development of liver and pancreas. Thank you.